Now, um, the next speaker is Janet Tai, and uh, Janet is an M14, and uh, she is uh, currently a graduate student um, at the uh, Johns Hopkins uh, Bloomberg School of Public Health, and where she's working with uh, Richard Markham, and her title is Lactobacilli Secreting VHH Against Human CD18 as a Potential HIV-1 Microbicide. Hi everyone, as Dr. Lindahl has mentioned, I'm Janet Tai, I'm an M14, and I'm a second year PhD student at Johns Hopkins School of Public Health in the Department of Molecular Microbiology and Immunology. And the talk I'm giving today is on uh, lactobacilli secreting VHH against CD18 as a potential HIV microbicide. So, um, Greater than 90% of new HIV infections are through sexual transmission, and 63% of these infections are in Sub-Saharan Africa. And this graph here shows um, the number of, <clears throat> okay, the number of uh, women and men um, between the ages of 15 to 49 who are, H who are living with HIV and AIDS. And we see that um, women actually account for great, for the majority of these infections, about 60%. In fact, three-fourths of uh, new infections between the ages of 15 and 24 are actually occurring in women in sub-Saharan Africa. And women in Africa are three to six times more likely to become infected with HIV than men. And the reason for this is that uh, even though um, condom use is actually very effective in preventing HIV, um, women have a hard time negotiating the use because uh, men actually discourage the use of condoms. So we've been trying to figure out ways in which women can protect themselves, and one of the ways is by using microbicide. So microbicide is a substance that is applied intravaginally or rectally to prevent HIV transmission. So there are certain characteristics that microbicide must have in order to be safe and effective. Uh, one, reason, uh, one way is that it's not carcinogenic or teratogenic. Um, it pre preserves the natural flora of the vaginal environment and that it also pH, uh, maintains the pH levels of the vaginal environment and also that it does not cause inflammation. So there is one treatment called noxinol nine that went through um, clinical trials and was actually found to be uh, to increase the rate of HIV transmission compared to placebo because it actually disrupted the cervical epithelial layer of the vagina. Um, for it to be effective, it has to work against cell-free and cell-associated HIV virus. So it's been found that in the male ejaculate, it actually contains uh, cell-free HIV virus and uh, cell-infected uh, cell HIV. Um, it must work in the presence of semen because uh, it tends to change the pH levels of the vagina. Um, it also can't lead to resistant HIV and it can alter the host immune response. So this graph, or not graph, but this figure shows different ways in which microbicides can work in preventing HIV transmission. And the new generation of microbicides that are in trials right now actually focus right here in which they use antiretrovirals um, specifically uh, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Um, and it's actually, uh, it's actually specific to the HIV virus. Uh, but a problem that this presents is that it can also lead to uh, HIV resistance. So our lab wanted to look at a host protein that we could block, uh, which doesn't uh, mutate as rapidly as HIV. And so we focused on the cervical epithelial layer. And the cervical epithelial layer is actually very effective in preventing HIV transmission. Um, actually, it only about 3% um, of um, HIV transmission actually occurs during sexual intercourse. 
Um, <clears throat> so if we can find a way to block HIV from passing through this layer, then we can prevent HIV transmission. <laughs> so this is just a closer look. Um, so the cervical layer, epithelial layer, contain these adhesion molecules such as ICAM. And so in the male semen, like I mentioned earlier, it contains uh, cell-associated HIV. Um, this is uh, monocyte-infected HIV. And um, it also contains, uh, it also contains um, integrins such as LFA1. And we also have cell-free HIV that also, when, when it buds from the host, it actually um, contains the host membrane and also contains this integrin called LFA1. So we could try blocking the uh, ICAMs that are on the cervical epithelial layer, or we could try blocking these integrins on cell-associated HIV and cell-free HIV, or we could do both. And our lab actually worked on doing both, but I'll mainly just be talking about antibodies against LFA1. So <clears throat> LFA1 is an integrin molecule consisting of an alpha chain, CD11A, and a beta chain, which we developed antibodies for, um, CD18. It's found in lymphocytes and monocytes. It's upregulated on HIV-infected cells, and it plays a role in the formation of the virological synapse during cell-cell HIV transfer. It's also incorporated into the viral membrane, like I mentioned earlier, and it aids in the transmigration of HIV across uh, the cervical epithelium. So we use this uh, trans-well system here um, as an in vitro model to study HIV transmission. So um, separating these two layers is a layer of cervical epithelial cells. And on the basal side, we have PBMCs. And on the apical side, we add our antibodies along with um, cell-free HIV. And we also did this with cell-associated HIV. And um, after infection, we then extract these PBMCs and determine whether or not it's been infected with HIV. And Using anti-CD18, we found that it actually significantly inhibited HIV transmission compared to our controls here. <clears throat> and so we did this in vitro, and we wanted to see if this can work in vivo. So we used a uh, human PBL skin mouse model. So we take mice, and we inject them peritoneally with human PBMCs. And these are skid mice, so they don't have an adaptive immune system, so they can't reject these human PBMCs. We also give them uh, Depo-Provera, which is a form of birth control to uh, decrease the cervical epithelial layer into a monolayer. We then uh, insert antibodies and HIV-infected PBMCs intravaginally. We then extract the human PBMCs, and then we use a P24 ELISA to determine whether or not it's been infected. And we found that using anti-human CD18 antibodies, none of our mice were HIV positive. Okay, so it's not economically feasible to use monoclonal antibodies um, against these adhesion molecules, so we had to come up with a delivery system. And we thought of using lactobacilli, which is normally found in the mucosal environment of the vagina. Um, it's also invisible to the user, um, and also continually produces antibodies. That way, um, it doesn't have to be applied in the immediate time right before sexual intercourse. Um, so our lab engineered it to produce single-chain variable fragments, which is basically a variable light chain um, combined with a heavy variable chain um, with the linker protein. But we found that it can produce it in large amounts, probably due to structural constraints. But previous studies have looked in the production of uh, single-domain antibody fragments, or VHHs, which they uh, produced in greater amounts. So the advantages of using VHH is that it's small in size, it has an increased specificity and affinity, it's thermo and chemically stable, and uh, it's a monomer, so it should be easier to produce by lactobacilli. So we hypothesize that lactobacilli secreting VHH against CD18 will serve as an effective microbicide against HIV transmission. So what are VHHs? Um, they're basically heavy chain deficient, or I'm sorry, they're heavy chain only antibodies, and they're found in a family, the camel family, basically consisting of llamas, alpacas, and camels. In our research, we actually used uh, alpacas. And so this is a conventional antibody. We, set, we have the heavy chain here, and then we have the light chain. And in the heavy chain only antibody, it's devoid of the devoid of the light chain, and we're only looking specifically here at this variable region, and so we actually have primers 
that are um, at a conserved leader region and at a more conserved hinge region so that we can amplify this region here. Um, and this is only found in the IgG family of immunoglobulins. Um, so there are genes associated with VHH production, but it's also been found that um, here you have a conventional antibody and here you have the heavy chain only antibody. And we see that um, there's actually a point mutation in the CH1 region so that during um, mRNA processing, it actually splices out this region. So that's why it doesn't have a CH1 uh, region. So you would probably ask, uh, since it's not joined by a light chain, then how can it compensate for the lack of combinatorial diversity? And the reason for that is that uh, the CDR1 and CDR3 region, of the hypervariable region, are extended, and it's stabilized by um, internal cysteine residues. Um, it's also been found that VHHs have an increased amount of somatic hypermutations in the hypervariable regions. Okay. So in our approach, uh, we immunized our alpaca with uh, GSTCD18, collect the blood, isolate the PBMCs, extract the mRNA, and make cDNA. And then I mentioned earlier we had primers specific for the VHH regions, which we amplified. Um, it's cloned into a T7 phage vector, which then explit, displays the antibody. And then we pan for it by uh, binding it to our antigen, CD18, and the phage that stick to CD18. We extract, um, we select positive clones, their DNA, and we can clone that into lactobacilli, which will hopefully secrete the VHH against CD18. And so um, I managed to do everything here up to this point, um, so I still have a lot left to do. Um, so right now I'm at this stage right here. I'm trying to produce uh, CD18 without the GST so that I could do the phage panning. Um, but, uh, so that's where I'm at right now. I, I'm not showing any data because um, I don't really have much and also because uh, due to time. But I'd like to thank Dr. Markham for letting me join his lab and for other members of the lab that worked on this project and also um, by the NIH who funded this work. Thank you. Well, actually, the resident population are lactobacilli, so it shouldn't really compete with them with it at no, all. But they, I mean, they are having, having the burden of producing this uh, extra protein mm -hmm. might uh, slow down their, their division a little bit. Um, that might be possible, but that's something that I guess we'll have to test when we get to that point. Yes. Um, you mean these VH VHHs? Well, yeah, the normal antibodies, you have the um, heavy chain and the light chain, which then, um, once they're made, they're combined in the ER. And because these don't have, um, actually, there's the, the um, there's actually mutations in the VHH heavy chain region that doesn't allow the light chain to bind with it. Any other questions? Great, thank, thank you. you.